What's up YouTube? Gabe here, back at it again. It's that time of year, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, and gender non-conforming people everywhere for the next Neo Nectar deck profile, because we're at probably number 30 at this point. So, before I begin, I want to give a, a special little shout out to somebody by the name of Ty Mikes. Ty here donated every single Neo Nectar foil from his three or something case splits to me, so as such, he has given me 80 different Neo Nectar foiled cards from BT12, so this deck is complete thanks to him and helping me not have to spend money on it, so thank you Ty for everything, you beautiful son of a bitch you with your little JoJo profile picture. Thank you for everything, so let's get started. The starter is still going to be two copies of Peach Orchard Maiden Elmi because it's honestly the best uh, starter for the Bloom build because it's just a really good card, you know? Move into the soul, call something with the same name as another card, and then bounce it. And granted, it has to be a grade two, but it lets you activate Bloom abilities twice. You can search for your heart card to get free stride fodder like you're playing Blaster Blade XD. So it's a great card, and you always run two of the Neo Nectar starter because Asha has a stride skill that you use to clone things. So yeah, that's why you run it at two. Wow. Next, we are running four copies of Renunculus of Searing Heart Asha. Again, it's still an Asha deck profile. So you want to use Asha as your main ride target because, you know, Asha's a really good card. Well... No, it's not. What the fuck am I talking about? Renunculus of Searing Heart Asha is really not that good. But, you know, it's better for the Bloom deck list to superior call things from your deck and to unflip and to soul charge. Because, you know, unflipping is fun, soul charging is fun. You never use the original Asha's GB2 anyways. But, you know, a Vanguard Restricted Bloom soul mandatory soul charge counter charge is great when they could have just made it rear guard and give it the May Clause, but no, only the Vanguard can let you counter charge. You have to soul charge and you have to, you know, you have to do it every time so you can't opt to not do it whenever you call another Asha. So yeah, I hate Renunculus of Searing Heart Asha so much, but it's objectively better than the original Renunculus Asha, so that's why I'm running her. Her, her stride skill has a higher cost than the original for no goddamn reason. Why do they give Neo Nectar all of this soul blasting shit and soul charging shit? It makes no sense at all. Um, yeah, and at the end of either player's turn, you can call a card from your hand to rear. If your opponent board wipes you, it lets you call a card to clone, which is good, which is a great thing that Neo Nectar needed. But yeah, I hate this card. I just hope that the third Asha like phantasmic blue or whatever is actually good i hope that they finally give neo nectar the goddamn alt mile clause of calling a thing before the stride skill like a neo nectar needed before any other fucking stride bonus i hope they make its uh, stride skill cheaper instead of more expensive and i hope they get rid of all of this stupid soul stuff that neo nectar has to do like give us like something like sparking where you can where you counter blast or use Soul Blast to get stuff out of the stole. Don't make Soul Blast a mandatory cost, because then you have to make Soul Charging a thing to pay for the mandatory cost, which defeats the purpose of getting things out of the soul to begin with. It's... I hate it. I hate it so much. I love Neo Nectar. Please stop making me hate it this way. Um, next, we are still running three copies of Summer's Height Flower Maiden Maruka because the Maruka Rowney combo is still the uh, most optimal way to play Asha. Uh, while Maruka's on Vanguard, when your opponent targets one of your rear guards with a card effect, you can Soul Blast one to draw a card. And um, since it's it's worded the same way as Resist, so like if your opponent goes into Phantom Diablo and uses that, or like Aura Geyser Doomed, you can still use the Soul Blast to draw a card. But this is once per turn for some reason. It would have been so much better if it wasn't. But, you know, Bushi Road can't let Neo Nectar be meta, so what did you expect? Um, but, like, its bloom ability is actually Vanguard or Rear Guard instead of just Vanguard, like, fucking Searing Heart Asha. And when you call a copy of Maruka, you can give a card 3k. And when the card you call. And if the card you give 3k is Rowney, you can give it on hit, draw, and 
What's Gabe's favorite thing about Neo Nectar? Soul Charge, because who doesn't like decking out? But you know, because this stacks, you can get massive hands, so more is good. The first edition from GB12, thank you to Time Mikes, is the Plumeria Flower Maiden Charl, who is actually a pretty decent card. I am I'm a fan of it. I'm, I'm definitely going to play test it at least for a little bit longer. It's when she attacks, if you have a Ranunculus Vanguard, you can check the top seven, pick one of your rear guards, and if that card is in the top, pick one of your units, right? Yeah, so you can pick your Vanguard, and if that card is in the top seven, you're allowed to call it to an open rear guard and shuffle your deck. Now, this is great because it's not GB restricted, so even if you have to ride to grade three first, you can use it. But why did it make you call to open rear? Not even Gold Paladin does that anymore. If this let you called to a closed, re to a occupied rear guard circle, this card would have been so much fucking better, and it would have actually made Neo Nectar much stronger because you could do actual multi attack plays instead of just general resource maintenance. But again, can't make Neo Nectar great. Now can we? Um, and her bloom ability is just okay. It's when you call another copy of her, choose a rear guard, and it gets 4k and boost. Um, it's fine, honestly. I'm te like, you can, you can, um, pick herself for it, because it's not other, so, like, if you have a column of Sharla, you know, if you have a Sharla, and you, you show it a call another Sharla, you can put something in the back row as a boost, or you can call a Sharla, the Sharla you call, you can call to the back row and give that Sharla you call boost, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, Shrill is decent. There were so many things about her that they could have made better, but they just didn't. That's fine. And, of course, we're still running four copies of the ideal maiden, Thuria, because, honestly, Thuria is just too good. The fact that it can proc any card's bloom is just obscene. The fact that she self-bounces herself by putting stuff into the deck is great. I love Thuria so much. I'm... Why don't... I've spent too long on this card in this deck profile as is because of all of the deck profiles since set six came out so set six set eight fighters collection with um with verano fighters collection with the gb8 set 11 try three not set 11 set 10 and try three and now set 12 they've all had thuria and they've all had thuria for a reason there's a reason why you're always running 4 Thuria. She's too good for the deck. Next, we're... Because, as you saw, we're running Mariuka, it's fair to assume that we're running four copies of Sunwheel, Maiden, Rowney. Uh, again, the combo's so good because... What's great about Rowney is she counts as Mariuka on both rear and in the deck. So if you have a Mariuka, you can use Stride Skill to clone and get Rowney out. And when you call Rowney, you can proc... Um, Maruka's bloom, and Rowney is also really nice because when you call her, when you her bloom ability is you could pick her or Maruka, which is really cool, and give them all um, the, the continuous ability one k for each unit with the bloom ability. This stacks, so if you call multiple Rownies, they can get multiple one k for each. I just wish Maruka had the same Rowney clause where on rear and in deck Maruka is Rowney because that means when you if they did that. You could call Mark Yuka to proc Rowney's Bloom, but again, that would be too broken, apparently. But yeah, um, Rowney's still the ideal, because you can hit some pretty big numbers and do some pretty nice shenanigans with it. Running four copies of Flower Keeper Dragon, because Nino Dr. does have a Counter Blast issue, so you don't need the Unflip PG. Um, you don't really need the Bloom PG, either, because... You don't run Inez anymore, and Inez was the only reason you ever ran the Bloom PG... I think I use the Bloom PG's ability, like, to Bloom and do things all of, like, three times in the amount of time that I've had it, because you just really don't use it. But Flower Keeper Dragon's really nice, because when you, um, you can PG anything from hand, so while you can't, you know, just have, like, a Gurgit Superior called PG from decking, so that, that doesn't matter, but it doesn't have the stupid you can only guard Vanguard thing. So you can PG anything, and if the card you PG is a Ranunculus, you can check the top five for any card that is on the field in the top five. You can add that one card to your hand. So you can't add the PG, even though the PG is technically on the field, because you have to choose a rear guard or a vanguard, unfortunately. 
because it would be hilarious if you just PG and search a PG, but whatever. Um, you can let you can search a stride fodder because if you have a grade three, you, you can if you can chug at your Vanguard if it's there and just get free stride fodder. So this is great because if it procs, it's basically just a free plus one. Uh, the next change from set twelve, thank you, Time Mikes, is Prosperity Maiden Diane, who I just kind of like the card in concept because it is a retrain of the eight K vanilla. And it has an ability. Its continuous ability is if your Vanguard has Renunculus in its name or the Bloom ability, she gets 1k and resists, so she basically becomes an 8k. Now, the most important thing that I just said is this card gets resist. Neo Nectar finally fucking has resist. It has another ability too, which makes this card actually definitely the card you're gonna run. But this card has resist in Neo Nectar, which is. The thing that I have been asking for since BT2 G2 came out when we actually got the first goddamn resist unit and Neo Nectar was in that set, we still didn't get fucking resist until two goddamn years later. But we finally fucking have resist now, which is too fucking good. Thank fucking God for this. Because now you're not dicked over by Link Joker or Kagero or Narukami. Because there's no card. I don't. As to, at least to my knowledge, there's no Narukami card that is just bind a card from the field. It's always retire or retire then bind. So because she has resist, you can just keep. You can always keep cards on the field, which is just so fucking good. But also, it's a nice fuck you to Ziegenberg because she has resist. So you can just have three in your back row and make your opponent discard three if you're playing against Blade Master because they can't touch it. So that's great. But also, there's another ability which is good. That's um, it's Bloom once per turn. Unfortunately, um, when you call a copy of her, she she herself gets 10k. Now she has resist, so you're definitely running her at four. But this card could have been so much better is if it wasn't once per turn, or if it was once per turn and you the card you call and the original get 1k, because the way it's worded is if you have one and you call the other, only this one gets the 10k. So you have to call another to give this one 10k. When if, even if it was once per turn, it just should have been call, call, plus 10 to both. But you know, it has resist, so I can't complain all that much, but it could have been made. That's one thing I would have done just to make it a lot better, and by that better, I mean make Neo Nectar actually Tier 2. And if any of you in the comment section say that Osh is Tier 2, please comment so I can tell you how fucking wrong you are. Um, it's Tier 3. I love Neo Nectar, it's Tier 3, and that's just how it is. Please don't be that person that just thinks that just because you play it or it beat you, it's g good. But, back on that, the Bloom, it, it does the 10k thing I just said, and at the end of the turn, you can Soul Blast 1 to bounce di to choose to bounce Diane. Now, ideally, they just take the Soul thing out completely, and it just said they just say you can bounce it or bounce it and let you or let you Soul Blast 1 and still bounce it. But no, they gave it Soul Blasting a cost so they could give you fucking what's it called? A reason to soul charge so that's whatever but diane has a way to self bounce so if you amass a few dianes you can just put about bloom put them all in your hand call call bloom call bloom and then end of the turn bounce the last two and just do that same thing so i really really like diane i really really fucking like diane there was, like, I'm, I'm, I did say the thing where it could be made better, but any card can be made better. But, like, for somebody who has been playing Neo Nectar since BT05, when I got to play Trailing Rose against Dote, MLB, and Phantom Blaster Overlord, we've come so fucking far, proportionally speaking, and I just love Diane for what it is, but it just could have been better, is all I'm trying to say. Diane's a great fucking card. Uh, next, Solar G deck, 4-pad meaning you only r run one Renunculus unit, so you might as well increase your chances of seeing it by searching it out. Getting to stride with the great one's fun. One copy of Maiden of Sweet Berry. It's a free search, it's basically, it's a free search to proc a bloom, and you put her back into your deck. Um, 
It gives you fun shenanigans. It's a, it's nice. I'm a fan. Uh, what do we do now? Triggers. Because we're running triggers with skills, my dudes. Cosmos Pixie Lizbeth. It's banned in J It's limited in Japan, but not for the reason any of you people are thinking. It's limited in Japan because in Japan, Neon Nectar has a much greater tournament presence, so it would be there for gen um, degenerate loops. But in terms of actual card design, it's a fair card. It's kind of like Thuria in the sense that there's a reason it's been in all of my Bloom deck profiles, so, like, I don't want to go into this in depth. It lets you put shit back and get draws, and you can use those draws with Thuria, so I don't want to go into that more than I need to. Uh, next, we're running more triggers with skills. We're running Cherry and Blossom, one of the cutest goddamn heal triggers to grace this goddamn game, second only to Cheer Girl Adelaide. Um, it's when you G-Guard, you can put a normal unit from drop. It, when you G-Guard into the G-Guard version of her, you can put a normal unit from drop to bottom of the deck. I wish they made this any unit, because, like, putting triggers back is fun. And Neo Nectar puts normal units back enough as is that it's not warranted. But again, because G-Guards exist, you will literally never call a heal trigger, so might as well have the potential to do it than not. Because the 5k doesn't matter when you're not going to call it. We're running four copies of Flower Guard Maiden Milus because it's the Renunculus crit when you Renunculus attack, move in the soul 5k and draw. What's fun with this is when you can clone thing when you can clone it and just get three pluses, like what you can do is if you ride the grade three first, you call this, you use Charlotte to attack first, call another Milus and basically just get a free draw. Which is really cool. Granted you lose a trigger, but it increases your hand size. So you're running four Miluses. Next, the last trigger, because we're still running triggers, Maiden is Zephyranthes. Moving to the Soul 3, give a card 3k. Um, the potential's there. I might have used this ability twice ever, but, you know, I'd much rather have it than not have it. Next, we're running to the G-Zone. So, the change now is we are currently only running three copies of Dream Spinning Ranunculus Asha, Set 12 introduced a new G unit that I'm running, and I just took Dream Spinning out as one of the slots. Also, because of Glorious, you kind of only need three, because first stride to Asha flip itself, second stride, Glorious target the third Asha. But, yeah, this has been in more deck profiles than I've done Bloom deck profiles, because it's in every one of my goddamn Neo Nectar deck profiles, except for... I mean, it had a cameo in Musketeers, but I'm not actually running it in Musketeers. I'm running it in Maiden Ofs. Um... Running it in the other Maiden Ups after set 12, I am I ran it in set 4 before Bloom even existed. There's a reason why you're still running this card, because it it's a great generic free card, and it gives you the best what finisher Neon Nectar's had. Renunculus and Glorious Bloom, Asha. We're only running one of her. We took out the other slot for the new card because, for the sake of diversity in terms of what you can stride into. I never really go into Glorious Bloom twice anyways. The one time in recent memory I did was when I went against that degenerate duo deck where you draw, like, two-thirds of your deck in a single turn. That's the only time I've ever really done it twice because I usually lose or win before. But, um, I really only need the one. Now... And that's why I'm only running three Dream Spinning, because I'm only running one Glorious Bloom. So, Glorious Bloom is still a good card, because, you know, beef up stuff a shit ton, maybe give Asha a crit. It's a good card. It's a good card. Still running two copies of Flower Pinches and Perpetual Summer Verano. It's the only Neo Nectar card that can put triggers back, which is really fun. It does. It's also, like, the only stride that isn't Dream Spinning that doesn't cost a Counter Blast. So if your opponent's denying you counter blasts and you don't want to slash can't use uh, uh, Searing Hearts GB2, it's something you can go into, and it's a decent option, and it gives you free bloom, it gives stuff boost. Um, I kind of wish it um, her and same thing with Searing Heart, instead of giving boost, gave attack from the back row. Yes, it would be too murakumo e, but it's better than boost because it means multi-attacks. Honestly, the main thing keeping Neon... One of the main things that's keeping Neon Nectar away from being Tier 1 is lack of multi-attack potential, because beat stick numbers don't really matter in the early game. Give us more resist shit and multi-attacks, and then Neon Nectar's good. 
but you know, it's fine. Verona's a good card. You're still running a two because putting triggers back is nice. Next, from set 12, we're running two copies of the Midsummer for our Princess Lieta, one SP. Thank you again, Time Mikes. Um, I run her because it's kind of how you deal with any type of board wipe shenanigans. Because what you do is you counterblast one, flip over a copy of herself. You can put up to one card from your hand into your soul. You don't have to, but the reason why is because she gets the name of every card in her soul. So if you have a fat soul, like with the um, Maruka Rowney play, if you get a hit off, she can do some pretty dumb shenanigans. So she gets the name of every card in her soul and search your deck for um, for each card in your, in your, for each face up card in your G zone plus one, you can clone up to the cards in your soul. So that's a weird way to word it, but basically, for each name in your soul, you can clone up to the number of cards in your G zone plus one. So if you have five cards in your, five different names, but only two cards in the G zone when you use her, you can only call two, and vice versa. If you have five G zone but two soul, you can only call two. But, you know, you can just call back a board instantly with this card, which is really nice. But, and for um, each face-up card in your G-Zone, uh, you can pick three cards. And if the number of cards in your G-Zone is two or more, you can choose three cards to give them 3K. So, um, much like the other cards, I'm just going to say how this could have been made better. One, this is a, basically a stripped upgrade of Selfina. Selfina is fucking ass. I hate Selfina so much. Selfina is just a bad card. I don't care if it gets a crit. Um, how this could have been made better was you can it's like it's honestly a fine card for what it is but the only thing i don't like is all it can do is give you board the 3k to 3 cards is done only once what i wish is if it was like give 1k for each face up g unit or give 3k for every two face up g units in the g zone it would have been great because then it could actually be used as a finisher instead of just a generic resource stride but it's fine you only need her at two because you only use her when you're running out of when you have no board and you kind of need to get a board back but yeah she's fine at two uh it's good against control because you get stuff back which is fun uh one flower princess of spring's beginning primavera with that dank 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 at a secret rare which there's only like 12 different secret rares or something i want to give a shout out to my boy axel joshua lee the grand fest california champion my good boy he hit me up with this so i want to thank him for this really 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 pretty fucking looking card like god damn that's a nice ass piece of cardboard um it's still fucking amazing with Bloom. Like, it's ba it's the GB8, but can be used earlier, and depending on what you have, can maybe be better and hit higher numbers. But you, she's a great fucking card. You gotta run her. You gotta run Primavera if you're playing Bloom. Next, we're running one copy of the Flower Princess of Beautiful Vinta uh, Inverno. We got that uh, SGR, thanks to my boy Tristan, who visited from Hawaii a couple weeks ago. I don't think I did a Bloom deck profile since I got this. So, yeah, we have this pretty-ass SGR. I got that pimped-out fucking G-Zone, my dudes. We got this SGR. We got this SP. We got this GR. We got this fucking text boxless GRs. We got this fucking SP. We got this fucking secret rare. We got this fucking GR. We got this fucking SP I'll talk about in a bit. This G zone is blinged out, my dudes. Gotta thank out all the homies for hitting me up with these pieces of cardboard. And we also gotta thank Bushiroad for making um, only decent Neo Nectar cards high fucking rarity like the GR Asha. And I gotta thank me for hating myself for wanting to buy an SP Dream Spinning Asha when uh, Bloom was going to be a thing because I wanted that fresh SP. But, you know, it's fine. What fucking card was I on? Um, Inverno. Right. That's the piece of cardboard I was talking about. 
So Inverno is a good card. It makes loops. Um, you can Soul Blast one, put up to five normal units from drop, put them into the deck, Soul Charge, unflip. No. Make Soul Charge not mandatory for that plus, for that five. Um, I don't fuck it. Yeah, make it not mandatory, please. Why is it mandatory? It doesn't need to be. Um, I like it because you can put shit back. Honestly, I know why they didn't say that le they let you put triggers back and it's normal, so I'm okay with that. But the way Neo Nectar works is you can put normal, you can and you will put normal units back into the deck often enough thanks to Lizbeth and uh, Thuria. If they could have let you put five triggers back in your deck, will still kind of be thick with not triggers just because of how much cloning and recycling you do, but it's fine. And GB2, um, when you when you call a card, counterblast one, discard one, pick a rearguard with bloom, search your deck for two copies of that card and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. Uh, it's how you do loops. It lets you get some fun resources with Lizbeth. You can just search out a bunch of shit to deck then if you want. Uh, it's good. It helps with loops. Uh, you can win by stall out with this card. It's decent. It's a good, decent stride. Jebate. It's basically... It's Primavera, but you can use it. It's Primavera, but counterblastless. If you end up using a lot of counterblasts, you don't have to. Um, but instead of choosing five to put deck, you choose three. You don't have to discard. And you pick one card and call three of it instead of picking two cards and calling two of them. And for each card you call, the called cards and... Uh, Lindros herself get 10k, so if you call three cards, they all get 30. So this is gonna kill the fuck out of people. It's a decent GB8. If you're at GB8, you're gonna do it. Like, it's not the best GB8, but it is by far one of the fucking worst. It's a good one, so I like it. So Breeze, it's a G deck. You gotta punish those people for, uh, not letting you stride, or if you're feeling in a particularly saucy mood, fuck people who are great locked. Uh, next, we are running one copy of uh, Flower Princess of Cherry Costarina, who's the G-Flip G-Guard. She's counterblast one, flip over another G-Unit. When you guard with her, call a co um, you can, she, w when you pay the cost, when you call her, she gets 5k no matter what. So even if you don't do anything, she's a 20k G-Guard for a counterblast one. And you can call a card... And if you have two copies of that card, she gets 10k shield, and you could proc any blooms that happen, which is really fun. Now, it's so it's basically just um, Rain Breath. So she's good, but honestly, given some of the other G guards that exist, they could have made it not Counter Blast 1, and it would have been a fair card. Like, you have Impede, which gets you a Retire and a Bind and a potential second Retire. You have fucking... Uh, the Royal Paladin one is basically just G-flip a card plus 10k shield. While this, you actually have to go out of your way to have two copies of a card. So honestly, they could have made it not counterblast one and so would have been fine. But you know, for what it is, it's still fine because it can. it's 30k by itself. And if you have Mariuka or if you're choosing to run Odette, you can give power to your Vanguard on top of it. So it's still fun to have. Um, next... We are running one copy of Flower Princess of Autumn Scenery Verona. This is another shout out to my boy Joshua Lee, my boy Axel. The only real reason we're running this is there's two reasons. One is it's because it's a car, it's an SP that my friend gave me, so it has that friendship aesthetic and it's shiny as fuck. But what she does is when you guard with her, you pick a rear guard for every other... You pick a unit, and for... No, you do pick a rear guard, I'm sorry. And for every other unit you have with that card's name, she gets 5k shield. So if you pick a rear guard and that rear guard's on your vanguard, she can she still gets 5k from that. Um, She's only... She's okay. She can hit some pretty decent shield for free if you're not playing against a control deck. But I'm running this... But, like... You really don't need this. I'm running it because my friend gave it to me. And it also just completes that beautiful aesthetic of the four different seasonal princesses of varying text boxless, pretty ass rarity. We're in the middle of fall right now. Winter's just around the, bre the bend. Spring's coming soon. And then summer's around just after that. 
these are my four pretty flower princess hoes. And yeah, um, that's I'm running it because now I have every season. I have two. I have three friendship cards in here. So come on, please give me a goddamn go. SGR Ver Verano just so I can have another friend give me that but you know yeah that's why you're running that's why I'm running it you really in all honesty you don't need it I'm running it because I like it and it makes my fr me think of my friends and I'm not playing Neo Nectar to win because if I'm playing to win I'm not playing Neo Nectar next we're running one copy of Rain Breath Dragon who is still one of the best G guards ever and I love it G guard with it, call a card, gets resist, and it also gets resist on the guardian circle, which is fun. So if you call a grade two, you can just intercept with it, and you can't get depoliced. And um, if you call a card, it gets five k. So you can call a grade two just for a free plus five shield, basically. So I love it. Playing against control, and you don't get to stride first. You can call a card to cloud with it. Dismal. You got some important shit you want to protect. That's why you're running it. I have been going on in this deck profile for, for far too goddamn long. It's been, at the time that I finished this sentence, 31 minutes and 17 seconds. Perfect. So I'm going to shut the fuck up now. So all I've been doing is talking about trading cards and complaining about how come, how come my trading cards aren't as good as other people's pieces of cardboard. So yeah, again, I want to thank my boy Ty Mikes for hitting me up with these cards. You're a real MVP for helping me get all these free cards so I don't have to pay for them. Love you, BB. Um... Wanna do? Is there anyone I want to thank? Um, not really. 